Newton, where we find Pitt football coach Pat Narduzzi. And, Pat, lucky you. You get to be on with your two favorite Pittsburgh sports writers, other than Jerry DePaula, of course. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Oh, you guys are all my favorites. It's all my favorites. I get to spend a little bit more time with Jerry because you guys never come down and visit us. I mean, you guys got to do the show down here one day right after practice, watch practice, watch the Steelers, and put the show on right here at the Durant Center. We should do that. That sounds like Especially. a nice invitation. We haven't had many invitations as of late, I can tell you that. Invitation delivered. All right. We'll take that one. Well, Pat, I know you're deep into prep here for Miami, obviously, but the Clemson game was just, I don't know, for me, watching it, it was it was just so much fun to remember what it's like to have the place jam-packed for an important game. And on the television, I mean, it felt like it felt like any other atmosphere, great atmosphere in college football where there was like a, a background of noise on every single play. And I'm wondering what that meant to you and what it could mean this weekend to have a similar atmosphere. Yeah, I mean, you know, I tell you what, guys, the atmosphere was, you know, it was electric, and it's the way it's supposed to be. And and uh, you know, I hope our fans in the city of Pittsburgh realize how important it is. I mean, you know, we'd all like to win championships, and we'd all like to have it, but we got to do it all together. And, and you know, I couldn't be happy with what that looked like and what that sounded like. I mean, you know, and again, I'll never forget this. I had James Conner sit in my office my first year here. He came in my office, sat, you know, sat there, and we were talking. And he goes, Coach, I just want to let you know that I play better in front of big crowds. And it's like, you know, that's just one guy, you know, telling like it is. And that's kind of how it is. And, you know, we need everybody and you need support and, and you need, you know, our players, our team, you know, need to know people care. And, and you know, there's the people that care that, you know, don't come to the game and, and uh, you know, they buy tickets and we've got 50,000 tickets out every week. But it's like, you know, you got you to, you know, you got to go sit in your seats. And uh, I think that's an important thing. But it was it was electric. You know, I'm glad it, you know, it looked good on TV, and, and uh, our kids surely played their tails off against a really good football team. One of my favorite parts, and I was at a pit volleyball game recently, is the Sweet Caroline part, Pat. We're all of a certain age here, you and I and Ron. Are you a Neil Diamond you fan? You a lot older than me. You guys are a lot older than me. <laughs> maybe, maybe one of us is. <laughs> uh, maybe one of us. No names mentioned. Are you a Neil That's Diamond good. fan? Do you like that song? Do you notice when it's oh, happening? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you notice it when it happens. I mean, we play to practice all the time. We played in the weight room. Um, it's just something that, you know, it's, at, it's the beginning of the fourth quarter that uh, our kids have gotten used to uh, having that thing. And it gets them cranked up as well, and it gets that crowd going. Pat, you've been around a long time, and you've been on both sides of it, where you're the hunter and the hunted. And now you're in control of the ACC so far. I know there's a long way to go. Is there a different approach for you? Is it different? when teams are coming after you with their best shot as opposed to the other way around? Hey, we're, we're still hunting. Okay. We're hunting for respect, you know, so that's really been the message is, you know, is we're, we're hungry. You know, we have unfinished business and there's, there's, you know, there's no, there's no target over here. We are, we're targeting everybody else. And, 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 and that's kind of our, we're, we're, you know, we're in attack mode right now and we got a good football team and, and you know, we're, we're going after them. They're the targets. We're, 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 we're loading fire. When you look at the team coming in here, they've had a change at quarterback, and this Tyler Van Dyke apparently is playing very well. What do you see on tape with this Miami team and with him in particular? Yeah, I mean, you know, Van Dyke is, is you know, just a kind of a different uh, different quarterback than the King kid. I mean, obviously the King kid transferred from Houston, uh, was a herald guy from there, can run can throw the RPOs and do all that. What you're seeing a little bit more out of the Van Dyke guys, he's like a kind of a young Kenny Pickett guy. Uh, he's, a, he's a kid we offered out of high school from Connecticut. He's, uh, he's a 6'3", 225-pound guy. You know, I'd imagine if him and Kenny stood side by side, uh, they would look very similar, uh, although Kenny's probably more rocked up right now because he's a senior. And, uh, Van Dyke's, you know, a, you know a, I guess a redshirt freshman. Um, but uh, – He's a good player. You know, I think they've really fallen into something. I think he's uh, again. There's no disrespect to King. He's just a different guy that uh, you know has not turned the ball over. I mean, they had zero turnovers last week, and I know King has been responsible for a few of those. And it's hard to win football games when you turn the ball over. So he's a guy that we got to turn him over. We got to get you know get some turnovers. We got to get some picks, and he throws it really well. So it's going to be a test again for our secondary. They run RPOs, and uh, and they'll drop back and throw it. And he's accurate. He's smooth and he's composed back there. You don't see him get rattled. And, uh, you know, I, I think he's a very, very good quarterback, maybe one of the better ones we've seen this year. And uh, we're going to we're gonna have to get after him. 
We're talking to pit coach Pat Narduzzi here on the Cook and Joe Show. Pat, you hear coaches talk all the time about how easy it is sometimes for one loss to become two or three losses. You obviously had a disappointing game against Western Michigan. How did you and your guys keep it together after that game? You know, I think it's, again, a tribute to our coaches and, and just, you know, what everybody does in those rooms. I mean, there's one message that comes from the, the head coach's office, and, you know, you know, and our, our players took the message. Our, our leadership council, our, our, our captains took the message, and, and we know what we did wrong there. I mean, you had a, you know, you had a, you know, you had a big win against Clemson, and we just couldn't let it go. And, you know, I attribute a lot to where, you know, I came in Sunday night and, and, and tore into them pretty good, told them how, you know, awful they really were. Uh, in that game, just because you know you're, you're always, you know, to me you can always coach them harder after a win, and after a loss you got to be a little careful because you know you, you know they they hurt. And uh, so I came in and tore them up on a Sunday, and and uh, what I did, you know, we always close the chapter, win or loss, like it, you know, that, that Clemson game's over, right? I mean, it's done with. We're not talking about it. And uh, after that game, same thing, we're done with the, the uh, game. But what I didn't do, you know, and you always, you know, I'm always looking at, you know, what what can I do better as a head coach is. Is I didn't shut down the other stuff. Like we shut it down in our building, but we didn't shut it down on the, the social media sites. Uh, you know, I think it carried on too long, and I don't know that for a fact. I just think, think they let it go. I told them, hey, it's over. They didn't listen to me, and um, you know, I think you know, just carried over. You know, tweeting pictures and videos from, you know, Rocky Top and all that crap, and they never let it go. So that's been the message since then: is hey, listen, you know, that's the last thing I say when we leave a team meeting on Sunday night. Is like it is really over shut your shit down, you know, focus on the next game. And I don't want to see or read anything on the social media. So, you know, you live and learn and that's, that's life. And, and if we, you know, if we, if, if you never fall backwards, you know, you, you have a hard time, you know, moving forward. Pat Narduzzi, pit football coach on the line. That was interesting. What you just said about the Clemson game. If I heard you correctly, you said you, you tore into them that night. Did you legitimately see things that a lot of things that bothered you from that, even from that win? Yeah, you know, I meant like you know, I tore him, you know, after the Tennessee game, you know, but mm. I didn't, you know, I didn't cancel the social media. And again, you know, anytime you win a game, yeah, there's a lot of things that we can correct. There's, there's a lot of things. I mean, shoot, we we turn the quarterback over, he scrambles, we knock him, we knock the ball out, we don't get it. We try to scoop a, a fumble where there's other people around. I mean, just you know, those things. I mean, we could have been a lot better in protection. Routes could have been better. We dropped some balls. We fumbled the ball. Um, I mean, Lucas Carl has a nice catch or whatever. So there's so many things, and we're not going to be perfect. But it only takes one of those plays to get you beat the next week. So we've got to fix the things that we've made mistakes at, and we've got to continue to move forward and get better. You just can't stay the same. If you stay the same, you know, somebody else is getting better. Pat, i got a two-parter here for you. Any updates on Izzy and Addison, you know, now that you're at midweek? Both uh, have been dealing with concussions. Do you feel good about them uh, playing Saturday? Well, I'd feel a lot better if they practiced. I can tell you that. Um, you know, I can't feel good until I see them out there. And again, it, you know, these these concussions are different. We've had some people be out for three weeks. Um, you know, just based on how their symptoms are. And again, it all is based on symptoms. So, without getting into any details, uh, when they practice, I'll feel better and I'll give you a better indication. But right now, um, you know, we're counting on Vince Davis and, and uh, Jalen Barden and and uh and Rodney Hammond at those positions and and uh it's a next man up uh next man up uh mentality. The other one I want I wanted to ask you about Addison in particular the chemistry he seems to have with Pickett. Uh this kid's a revelation. I mean, he's been a, a really stud for you since day 1. What do you like so much about his game? You know, the first thing is he's he's unselfish, you know. That guy doesn't say a word about, like, Coach, I need to get more catch. I only had four this weekend or I only had eight, whatever it may be. He doesn't say a word. He's unselfish. He's a team guy. And uh, and all he does is his job every day, on and off the field. I mean, he's never late for a class. He doesn't miss a tutor. He's out there. He never never has a miss assignment. And I don't want to make him sound like he's perfect, but he's about as damn near perfect as you can be as a, as a person in, in this age. Um, he just, like, he's just so consistent. And, you know, when you look out the window, you know, some of these Pittsburgh Steelers, you, you know, consistency is the key. Uh, you can't have these up and down days. And, you know, I talk to our guys all the time about consistency at every position. And, and uh, Jordan, Jordan is one of those guys that's just so consistent. Kenny knows where he's going to be, knows he's going to run the right route. He doesn't have to, you know, go, oh, you know, he's, his route's too deep, too shallow. I mean, all those things are so important. And uh, the consistency is the, is the critical thing. And obviously he's a talented football player and he, he can run, he can change directions, he runs – he runs great routes. 
um, but he's smart and he's he's reliable. Pat, you guys jumped up to 17, I think, in the AP poll this week. Uh, and for I think for a lot of Pitt fans, it was fun to see you move past Penn State. And yet your fellow coaches still have Penn State ahead of you. Do you pay attention to things like that? How do you explain that? You know what? Uh, you know, I don't I, I don't look at all that. I don't, you know, I, I care less who's in front, who's in behind. It's, it's all about the next game. And if we just take care of business, you know, those rankings will go where they will be. It's, it's where you are at the end of the year. I mean, I think the preseason, the preseason rankings are the biggest joke that I've ever seen. Um, and, uh, you know, there's no reason to have preseason. I mean, they're going to have these playoff rankings coming out here in another week or two. Those are the ones that matter. I mean, what do we have preseason rankings for? They're so dead wrong. I mean, if you looked at the preseason rankings compared to what it looks like right now, um, you know, it, it, they should be ashamed that they even have them anymore. But uh, um, I'm not worried about, you know, where we rank, who in front and all that. And, uh, coaches compared to, I mean, you know, again, I do, I vote for coaches poll, and I actually, you know, I do it myself. And I know there's a lot of coaches who let their sports info guy do it. Um, but I look into it, and, you know, there's a lot of decisions I make based on, you know, I know who they play. And I think coaches do know more than the players, but, um, you know, you know, we know who we're playing this weekend, and, uh, and we're locked in and focused. Did you put yourselves ahead of Penn State? Um, I can't tell you that, but probably – <laughs> I don't have it memorized, but I would say yes, you know, yes. Uh, Pat, you know, Kenny Pickett said many times when he played his last game last year, he was convinced he was leaving. Did you share that feeling? And can you just, you know, talk about maybe your joy when you heard he was coming back? Yeah, I mean, I was home, I was home that afternoon, that evening, really, about 9 o'clock at night um, when I got the news and um, – you know, I think I talked to him and his dad either the night before, I think, you know, about the same time, 8 o'clock, 8, 8.30 at night. And, and uh, maybe it was coming, but you just don't know. Um, he was so straight-faced when I talked to him the night before. But, uh, you know, obviously elated. It was, you know, um, and again, I mean, I think it, it, it turned out to be a great decision. That, and that's what you're happy for. Um, you know, it would have been a shame if it had come back and not played like he's playing right now. But uh, to have the hype doing this is why you play college football. This is this is what it's all about. And he's playing at a high level. He's got a chance to do great things. And you know, we roll as Kenny rolls. And uh, if Kenny keeps playing like he is, um, you know, our offense will be hard to stop. And this Pitt, uh, Panther football team will be hard to stop. I talked to. I was at the game Saturday, Pat, and I talked to a couple of the NFL scouts there, and they said they love everything about the kid: his size, his arm. We saw his mobility on that last series when he ran for the first down. Uh, twice, but they said the thing is experience. Nothing beats it. That it's just he's older and he sees the game so well. Would you agree with that? No question about it. I mean, I think you know experience is everything, and that's why you come back for another year. Um, and you know, he, he's just so smart um, and composed. He makes great decisions. Um, the experience. And here's the other thing I'll throw at you when you talk about the NFL is he's a pro quarterback. Okay. We're not running some zone read fancy, you know, you know, just spread offense with these, you know, these crazy splits out to the to the sidelines. This is real. I mean, this is a pro offense. This is not some, you know, high school offense that, that you know someone brought up from high school and is doing it now. It is a pro offense that you know he takes snaps under center. He gets in the shotgun. You know, he does it all like an NFL team does. And. And to me, if I was an NFL, you know, GM, head coach, that's what I'm looking at is the style of offense uh, that we play in. That's what he's, ex you know, excelling in. Last question, Pat. Um, people are looking at you guys now as having a chance, like a legit chance uh, at the college football playoff. And I'm wondering when you set your goals, obviously it's win this week. But do you also have goals that you mention with the team beyond that from time to time, whether it's winning the Coastal, winning the ACC, or getting to that? You know, is that the bullseye? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I think ultimately the goal is to win the ACC championship. Everybody would like to talk about national champions, and, that, and that's great. But the first thing you have to do is win an ACC championship. And when you do that, then, you know, we feel like you've got a great chance of being one of those teams, and then you move on, and then that's your next goal. Um, but, uh you know, in in the off season, you know, you know, in the off season, you know, through our winter conditioning in the weight room, through spring ball, every every uh, every day after practice, that's what we we, we break down as a, as a group. You know, ACC champs on three, one, two, three, ACC champs. That's what we do. And then when we get into season, you know, 
like you know today after practice it's beat Miami you know um, so once we get into the season it's it's one focus it's one game but in the off season that's what we're working towards you know whether it's in the weight room or in spring ball we're working on you know that that's the final goal is to be ACC champions. Pat, we appreciate you taking time out of a busy week. Good luck on Saturday. And we are going to take you up on your offer to come down there and do our show. Come on down. Come on down. Get it done. We'd love to have you. And uh, appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me on today and hail to pit. Thank you, Pat. That was interesting, Ron. Was it not? I thought the whole thing was. He, he's sitting pretty right now. There's no doubt. They're in a great spot. I mean, I, I don't. you don't want to say to him, I mean, they could lose to Miami and still win the ACC championship. Or lose. They're two games ahead in the Coastal Division. They're going to play, unless there's a total collapse, they're going to play for the ACC championship. And the He's latest, in a great spot. The latest projection I saw, and I don't think it's a good chance, but this would reflect that it's not a good chance, but it's more than like a lottery chance. There's a 23% chance they could get into the playoff. And I just wonder if that Western Michigan, certainly one more loss ends that conversation, but the Western Michigan loss might anyway, right? Right, depending on how it turns out. I mean, a one-loss Alabama team is going to go. Uh, George is undefeated. It could lose one. It's going to go. Um, Oklahoma's still undefeated. Cincinnati's out there. Oregon has one loss. Um, th- but there's a lot of games that those a, teams could lose. Absolutely. There's a lot of football left. But Pitt, Pitt needs to take care of its business and then get a little help and then see where it falls. It almost feels like the good news and the bad news is not having any high-caliber opponents left. Although Wake Forest, if they keep winning, could be a top-10 team. And they, they, they would meet them in the ACC championship game. That's right. All right. Coming up, let's talk a little – college football why don't we do that while it's on our minds here we have ed bouchette at the top of the hour to get back into steelers but why don't we take a little look at Pitt's road ahead and take calls from you whether you're a full believer here right now 